the press's role at the Northwest Evening Mail in Barrow in Furness. The big rugby league story on the sports pages is the shock decision of the Barrow Braves coach Dennis Ramsdale to quit after only three months in charge of the struggling second division side. But the Evening Mail's features editor has been working on a much bigger story. For the last two years, Mike Gardner has been compiling the tale of a man who's a hero in his hometown. The front page of the Evening Mail from 1952 tells of Great Britain's Ashes triumph against the Australian tourists. The victorious team was led by Willie Horne, the Barrow standoff. Willie was once told he was too slight to play rugby league, but he joined Barrow in 1943 and became a star in the number six shirt. He was a ferocious tackler and a prolific goal kicker. He scored over 2,000 points in his 16-year long career. Now the story of this South Cumbrian legend has been chronicled in a new book written by a lifelong Barrow fan. Well, he could tackle forwards with so, with so much time and he used to go into the defensive line alongside forwards and tackle with great courage. On top of that, he could kick drop goals, he could kick penalty goals, he could kick for position. And he used to do the thing that I can't quite visualise, but I've had it described to by so many people, that he used to throw the ball, hold the ball like an American football quarterback and miss three and four men out and throw the ball 50 yards. Lots of people have told me about that. And on top of everything else, he was an inspirational captain who led from the front who everyone that played with him absolutely idolised and would do anything for him. Willie is pictured here introducing Bradford's Ken Trail to Lord Derby before the final test against the Aussies in 1952. Captaining an Ashes winning team would be the pinnacle for most people, but for Willie Horne, the greatest moment came in 1955 when he led Barrow to victory against Cumbrian rivals Workington at Wembley. Would it be fair to say that probably his greatest achievement was the 1955 Challenge Cup final when Barrow beat Workington? I think it would be. I mean, he was obviously very proud to captain his country and to go on Australian tours, but talking to him, he was most proud of all to, to leave Barrow, I think. Barrow is town. I think he feels he feels a, a pride in leading Barrow. And obviously, Barrow have only ever won the Cup once. Well, they've been to two Cup finals before then. Um, so I think he was, he was proud to do that. And he's very proud of, of the players he played with. I mean, people... Um, in Barrow, don't realise what a good team we had. We had all the all the three quarters were internationals, the two halfbacks were internationals, and we had three international forwards. And they all they had a reputation for playing open rugby, so they threw the ball from one side to fill the other. That I mean, that's why they got average crowds of fourteen, fifteen thousand all the time. Reg Parker on the left was second row in the Barrow side with Willie Horn during the fifties. Bill Wookie was in the Workington side that was beaten 21-12 by Willie Horn's Barrow in the 55 Challenge Cup final. Both men are admirers. He was a complete footballer. He could do everything and anything. And not only that, he used to lead by example. And we all knew he could do it, so we had to do it. And on top of that, he was a gentleman as well. Under that jersey, he had a pair of big shoulders, which people, big forwards, didn't seem to think about, but they knew when he tackled them. He used to do this hand and foot tackle, and they used to fly when he put that tackle in. Willie's still around. He's really the, the link between Barrow and, and its glory days, isn't he? He is. He is the link, yes. And what's more, I felt very privileged to have played with him. Well, somebody, Billy, played against him, 1955, Wembley, an 18-year-old, I think you were, playing for Workington against... 19. 19. Yeah. Against uh, Willie Horn. What are your memories of that occasion? Well, I was supposed to mark him that day, but uh, it was like a ghost, chasing a ghost, really, because he, he just was all over the place. I mean, the only time I tackled him was at the end of the game. When Barrow won the Challenge Cup, the celebrations went on for two weeks. Willie, at the age of 33, collected the trophy. It was for that achievement that Willie Horn is revered in Barrow. It even drove some people to poetry. We stood and cried at Wembley when Willie's boys won through. He brought the cup to Barrow. Wasn't that a do? Willie just went out there and enjoyed it. I mean, I, he coached a bit, but I understand that he just said, go out and play rugby, and that's what teams did. I've, I've, it's changed now, of course. You don't do that anymore. It's all possession, and whereas in those days, I think you used to throw the ball around a lot more. 
just go out and play rugby and that was really his philosophy I think so yeah and that's why I mean they won they, they, won, they won everything Barrow you know they had a wonderful team Will is now 72 and he steers clear of the limelight but he was recently made a freeman of the town and now his story has been told the story told by Mike Gardner the life and times of a rugby league legend Willie Horn. The book is only available in South Cumbria, but you can win one of five free copies that we've got to give away to the first five letters received in the next seven days to our tackle bag. Tackle bag, Sky Sports, P.O. Box 6, Grantway, Isleworth, Middlesex, TW75 QQ. Mark your letters, Willie Horn. First five out of the hat, win the books.